Welcome back to Halcyon Days of PC Gaming, a simpler time when loot boxes were just boxes you put loot in, and FPS gaming was about to get a major shock. Yes, Call of Duty was a massive title for PC gaming for a long time. In fact, 2003 was something of a vintage year with both COD 1 and Wolfenstein Enemy Territory launching, and then Call of Duty 2 releasing just two years later in 2005. Why the history lesson? Well, the new title, Battalion 1944, looks to become in some way a spiritual successor to those hallowed titles. And last weekend's beta test was a good time to see if those lofty aspirations were actually in reach. So how does it play? Well, first of all you're greeted, at least to someone like me who remembers COD 1 actually releasing, with something of a pleasant old school feel to things. This may be a game looking towards Call of Duty, but this is a time before the likes of killstreaks, perks and airstrikes. There were two main modes in the beta, but both were based off a 5v5 setup. Arcade was a mix of team deathmatch, capture the flag and domination modes. All had constant respawning and provided the best way to become accustomed to the cadence and feel of the game. The other mode was a ranked competitive mode called Wartide for people who found their tryhard pants. This was basically a single life search and destroy, also known as everyone knows how this works because it's been the staple of Counter-Strike since the dawn of time. Ranked mode did have an extra layer of complexity in terms of the card system. This basically adds some aspect of economy to the game. The classes you select to play each round, apart from the default one, drop a card if they die. So if you kill the enemy sniper and collect their drop card, your team gets another sniper added to their pool that they can then use denying it from the enemy's resources. It did add another level of intrigue to the mode, but I think, at least during the beta, I didn't see it impact heavily or how people actually play around it as a tactic. Perhaps in high-level team play, people might use valuable card drops to bait their opponents. And if I'm honest, I kind of preferred the arcade mode. Ranked plays too much emphasis on single moments of very high skill play and generated too much tension for me to play whenever I wasn't with friends. I'd say this was just me getting older, but truth be told, I preferred the constant respawn options when I was younger too. If you're into CS or other search and destroy games, I'm sure you'll feel immediately at home. I heard some people comparing this game to COD 4, and if I'm honest, I don't see the connection anywhere near as strong as I do to COD 1 or COD 2. It's not just those games share the same World War II setting, but the era does influence the weapons used and hence dictate the focus of the game. There are way more semi-auto rifles than there are automatic weapons, so that old SMG rush doesn't happen anywhere near as often in Battalion as it did in COD 4. If you're coming from Dirty Bomb or ET, you're going to find that aiming down sights is way more important and that the movement feels more restrictive and with slower overall speed and has less of a arcade momentum feel. ET may be from the same era as COD 1, but its influence on Battalion seems much, much lower. There's none of the abilities such as artillery or airstrikes that we have in E.T., and even more so if you compare it to the character-based abilities that are the cornerstone of Dirty Bomb. Performance was extremely good with only one exception. I'm sure with even a modest setup you could max out a 120 or even 144 hertz monitor. There's only one map that I saw a huge drop in FPS when I had the FX setting set to Ultra. I'm guessing this is more of a bug of some sort as the rest of the time performance, as I said, was extremely good. Despite the appearance of this game, it isn't running on an old engine. This is a UE4 title. If I'm being cruel, and this is YouTube so apparently it's like the law or something, I'd say that with the game looking as it does, it should probably run well. Sarcasm aside, this is certainly meant to be about aping former titles and styles rather than pushing the boundaries of graphical fidelity. Some of the maps look better than others in terms of environmental dressing, but I'd imagine there's work to do all round and that none of the maps are final. And while I'm being a negative Nancy, let me say there's a few other rough edges of playing that I'd like to see have more work. The maps need to be tweaked for other game modes like CTF. It might not be a big deal for the ranked war type mode, but in CTF you can quite easily spawn camp a team on the coastal map. And speaking of the other modes, they should probably have some sort of class limit to the TDM modes where the card economy system doesn't exist. Having a server where you're the only one not playing Sniper doesn't feel like a very fun or balanced experience. The actual movement itself is perhaps too close to COD 2. There was something restrictive or stilted about it, not least the stamina system, that didn't feel like it raised the skill ceiling much 
as there was no feedback on its status, but some sort of indication would allow for more informed decision making, and at the moment it just came across as basically an irritation. Oh, and the collisions at the start of each ranked round are also incredibly annoying. But okay, yes, enough of that. Let's talk about weapons and how well they're made. Yes, the environments may be throwback in their style, but the quality of the first person weapon models is really quite high. Not only is the gunplay of the game good, with each weapon feeling unique and the feedback good, their visual poly count and texture resolution is good too. One of my friends pointed out the weapons already have inspect animations too which may or may not set off alarm bells depending on how cynical you're feeling. Yes, it seems the weapon skins are going to be in Battalion. My hope is that they're linked to progression in some way. Perhaps they're looking to reference the old COD system and having unlocks attached to achievements. Get X number of kills with this gun, get Y number of headshots with this gun, that sort of thing. Aside from that, we only have one skin confirmed as actually being in the game. Yes, it seems that streamer and former CS Pro Shroud is getting his own skin in the game. And yes, initially I was worried about this perhaps looking like a CS skin in a World War II game, but the actual result looks not too bad at all. I'm not about to steal his content for this video, so I've linked the exact time he shows the skin in his recent game stream in the description below if you want to check it out. Apart from that, we know that the game is going early access on Steam on February the 1st, and will be a pretty reasonable $15, with all future DLC being free. The full development roadmap is on their site as well, I'll link that in the description too, but it's probably fair to say that they have big plans in letting the competitive communities help this game take off. From offline LAN support in Q1 to actual official LAN events in the second quarter of 2018, it seems they know their audience expectations. The only other question comes where their monetary stream will continue to come from. I have to believe that with all the loot box drama last year, the developers won't be adding something like CSGO style crates, but obviously they need people regularly investing in the game to fund development. I'm hoping there are direct sale cosmetic plans in the future. Did you play COD back in the day? Were you an ET fan? Are you playing Dirty Bomb now? Would you like to see me cover Battalion 1944 more in the future? Let me know your impressions, thoughts in the comments below right now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider tapping that thumb up button now and pinging that subscribe button. It helps me grow the channel and make videos like this one. If you want to hear me complain about things, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at LCTR Games. There's links in the description below for all things social media. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.